whole stand up word of life. I know you're fasting. You might be hungry. But it's time to praise. Amen. Put those hands together. Come on, let's lift him up. He's worthy. so good in the middle of the fast you're hungry but you also realize that God is good amen so come on help us sing our lives our hearts our hands we're reaching out to see you move again we can hardly wait come flood this place we're ready now it's all about to change let your kingdom come
for your goodness in this place tonight. Father, we take this time to pray for our president, President Trump. Flood him with light, fill him with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Father, we pray for our nation. Father, we thank you for your goodness being poured out on our nation. We thank you for reviving our nation, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pour out the rain of your spirit in our nation. And Father, we pray over these prayer requests. Father, we pray for grace to flow. Father, we pray for healing to flow in the name of Jesus. Let your wisdom flow in the lives of these in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for the service tonight. And Father, we thank you for your glory being revealed tonight in our midst. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. we want to welcome you. If this is your first service with us, we'd love to meet you after service in our guest center. In the chair in front of you, there's a card that says, I'm new here. You can fill that out and drop it in the offering or bring it with you to our guest center after service. Now, here's what's coming up. If you're 55 or older, we have a free lunch for you on Monday, the 14th at noon in our fellowship hall. Our music school is enrolling now. We offer lessons for piano, guitar, voice, drums, and bass guitar. You can get enrollment information at the Information Center or at our website. 
We are so excited about our new semester of Life Groups starting up next month. And if you're interested in leading a group, you can attend our Life Group Leaders Meeting on Wednesday the 23rd at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. We've got a lunch for our adult ministry, a Life Group Leaders Meeting coming up, and a great chance for you to learn how to play an instrument. Have you picked up one of our 21 day devotionals yet? If you haven't, you can get one at our Information Center or you can download one from our website. This book is part of our month long series called Better. It's all about prayer. And with that, we are having a week of prayer starting on the 21st. That Monday through Friday, we will have one hour of prayer twice a day at noon and at 7 p.m. Check it out, our Better series. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Now, I know that's a little bit of weak clapping because I know some of you, like, like Chris said earlier, you know, you're, you're getting in the process of your fast, and so you might feel a little bit of little weakness, but that is okay. That is all right. We believe in you, and we believe that what you're doing, you are getting better at what matters the most. Amen. Hey, I'd like to welcome you all tonight. My name is Paul. I'm one of the pastors here on staff. If you are a guest, I just want to take a moment and just to greet you and welcome you to tonight's service. Uh, we just want to thank you for, for being here, for being a part of this service. If you could do us a huge favor and take that card in the seat back in front of you that says, I'm new here, and fill it out. It's front and back. Just fill it out with as much information as you're comfortable with, and you can do one of two things with that card. You can take it, place it in the offering here in just a few moments, or you can hold on to that card until the very end of service. Come to our guest center, which is directly back behind these back doors. You can't miss it. And that's where some of our members of our staff will be there to greet you, to thank you so much in person for being a part of our service, and also to place a free gift in your hand because everyone loves free stuff. Am I, am I wrong? I guess, I don't know. It seems like it's 50-50 here. So, but we are excited, and I am very proud of all of you because we have not had service for a couple of weeks on a Wednesday night, and you all showed up tonight hungry, expecting, and excited. So, man, we're, we're just thankful. And I do have a couple quick announcements that I want to hit on. Um, if you have not picked up a devotional, like the video announcement said, you can stop by the Information Center and pick one up. Or you can go to our website uh, and download one. We have it there as a PDF file. It's pretty easy to, to, to do that as well if you are tech savvy. And then also I just want to make one small correction to uh, the video announcements. Is that week of prayer on the 21st, we will not have prayer at noon. We will only have prayer at 7 o'clock every single night that week. Okay, so you can come here. The office might be open. You know, it'll be open at noon. If you want to come pray, hey, that's... That's all you, but uh, we are actually going to have the scheduled intercessory prayer that week starting at 7 o'clock Monday through Friday. So how many of you are excited about that? Amen. Amen. It's going to be an awesome time. And if you are a guest, you may be wondering what we're talking about with all this fasting and things. This past Monday, we kicked off our 21 days of prayer and fasting as a church. And so there's a lot of people here uh, that are giving up certain things, that are, that are fasting certain stuff. And they're praying and they're seeking God. And they, we as a church are going to get better at what matters the most. And that's, that's Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I know Ms. Dora over at the coffee shop is missing me. I know the ladies uh, there that normally give me my cup of coffee are missing me because I'm going 21 days without a cup of joe. So if you have some more prayers, you can just send them my way. Okay, the past couple days, I'll be honest with you, have been a little tough, but we've endured. I've endured. My wife has endured. So we are, uh, we are good. We are over that hump, amen. And so I'm just really excited uh, about the, the remaining days in this, in this time of fasting and praying. And I just believe for me personally that God's going to do some incredible things. He's going to speak some things, some clarity into my life. And I believe the same for every single one of you that is doing the same. Amen. Now, how many is ready to give tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, if you want to start, if you want to start 2019 at being better at what matters most, 
I'll tell you, a good place to start is in giving. That is a really good place to start. And, you know, uh, I went, uh, I took my wife and a group of young adults. Uh, we went out to dinner this past Sunday evening. And if you were here for first service this past Sunday, you heard Pastor Jeffrey say, you know, we're about to jump into a fast. So that means a lot of people are going to be eating really good come Sunday evening. That was me. Okay. We ate really, really good Sunday evening. And so we went, uh, we went as a group and had a great time. But while we were there, the, the, the waiter that we had, he, he wasn't grouchy. Okay, but he was not, and it was obvious he was not in a good mood, okay? Maybe he just was a, was a waiter that did not like large groups. Me, if I was a waiter, I'd love large groups because that just means a big tip in Jesus' name. But he just, he did not seem like he was having a very good time, unlike us, because we were eating and we were having a great time, okay? So, so what I did, and this is not a brag uh, on me by any means, but I, I, I gave him a, a sizable tip, and then I put something else in his little, his little folder here. I put one of these cards in there. And if you don't know what this card is, this is, a, this is what we have here at Word of Life. It's called a generosity card. And on the front, it just says something extra to remind you that God loves you. And on the back, it's got some information about the church. And, you know, when I left there, and that's all I did. I, I, I didn't say anything to him or, or anything, you know, out of the ordinary or anything like that. I put that card with the tip, and we left. But, you know, I was thinking when we left there, and I, I was thinking about it on the ride home, and I was thinking a little bit about it uh, this week, is, you know, we as Christians, we as believers, we should be the most generous people on this planet. You know, sometimes I'll be honest with you, when, I, when I'm up here and I, uh, and I have to give you an offering message or, or give you, you know, or try to compel you to give, I'll be honest with you, sometimes it's difficult for me to plan and do that because in my mind, in my thinking, is that we as believers should be the utmost generous people in the world. And so I should not have to give you a message to try and compel you why you should give. If you're a believer... It should just be within you to want to give and want to bless others and want to see people's lives change and get, to, get an opportunity for people to know God. But that's what we as believers do. We're generous. We are the most generous people on this planet. And with that generosity, we can lead people to know Jesus. And so that's my point to you tonight is that with your generosity, never take your generosity for granted because in that you have an opportunity to see someone's life changed forever. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you, if you've got your offerings, we're about, to, we're about to receive that. You can take an envelope. You can also give through our website. Those are the two ways uh, that you can give. But I want to encourage each and every one of you that when you leave this place tonight, there's two tables out there. Anywhere we have a flat surface, we have stacks of these cards. Grab these cards. And anytime you have an opportunity to show the love of Jesus and to use this card, use it. That's what they're there for. They're there to let people know. It's a simple reminder and an easy way for people to know that God loves them. How many of you are ready to give tonight? Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray. So if you want to hold your offerings up, I'm going to pray over them. And so, Father, I thank you, God, for tonight. God, I thank you for every single giver in this place. God, I pray that as they sow their seed, God, as they give to your kingdom, God, I thank you that every need that they have is met. God, and I thank you that as they give, you will use this to change and impact lives for eternity. And we praise you for it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. After those containers are passed, go ahead and stand up and let's worship God tonight. You know, I don't think we need to, to go on a 21-day fast to realize that God is God. But one pleasant side effect is that uh, you realize that he's the only person that matters. You know, that perspective begins to narrow, begins to focus in, and you just realize and you see that, man, maybe the stuff that I've been toiling about, fretting about, worrying about, fighting with and wrestling with, it really doesn't doesn't matter. Everything is small in comparison to our Father. 
So I just encourage you, whether you might be weak in body and mind, no matter where you might be tonight, I can guarantee that there is a place, a seat in the presence of God that's got your name on it. He already saw you. He knew you'd be in this moment. And he has set something in that seat for you. A gift, provision, a word. I encourage you, let's go get that tonight. Come on, let's go get that tonight. Before we ever start the song, if you feel comfortable, close your eyes, lift a hand to heaven, and just let them know just that simple truth. Father God, you're the only one that matters. You're the most important thing in our lives. In you we move. We have our being, our life is in you, our future is in you. Everything is contained in you.
center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning. bless you in this place and father we may not have control over a lot of things but we do have control over what and who we fix our eyes on that is the reason this night this day over the next many days that we're getting better at prayer and fasting we choose to put our eyes, our affections on you. So that God, at the end of these 21 days, at the end of this season, that you'll still be there. Good at day 22, day 30, day 50, day 70 into 2019, that you'll still be the focus 
that you'll still be the focus and you feel our sight so much we can't see our old past anymore that you feel our, 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 our sight so much that all we can see all we can see is a future full of you full of victory full of blessings full of goodness full of destiny and purpose father we choose to put our eyes on you today so that tomorrow and the next day the next month the next year that we can keep them there we can keep that focus we can keep you where you belong and that's in the center of our life and our focus so we just bless you in this place we love you so much and we declare that you are the center you're the center of our life you're it we choose to place our attention, our affection, and our focus on you and you alone. And everybody that agrees says a great big uh, amen. Why don't you give the Lord a shout of praise? Come on now. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't be seated. Don't be seated. Don't, 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 don't be seated. Praise God. Turn to two or three people and say, you must be in love with Jesus because you're here on Wednesday night. You must be in love with Jesus because you are here on Wednesday night. And then you can be seated. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, how many, how many just love the way we started off praise tonight? I mean, listen, listen, for us that are rhythmically challenged, just kind of wants to make you move, amen? I like that. I think we ought to be moving in church, right? We ought to enjoy God's presence. We ought to enjoy each other. We ought to enjoy, we ought to laugh some. How many likes to laugh? And, um, and, and then just enjoy uh, the, the, the moment of being able to gather together to hear what God is doing and hear what God's saying to us, also experience His presence. Amen. It's just awesome. I um, want to welcome everybody that's watching live stream this, uh, this evening. If you are with us through technology, welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Word of Life Center. And uh, we want to say you are very welcome here. Also, uh, if you're looking for a church, why don't you come by and check us out sometime uh, on a weekend, a weeknight, whichever you choose. Because any time that you come, we promise you we're going to treat you just like this is your home. We would be happy to have you in this place as our guest. Word of Life Center, let's give everybody that's watching on Life Center a great big warm welcome. Pastor is uh, pastor's out of town uh, tonight, but he's going to be in the house on Sunday morning. <laughs> pastor Sam's going to be in the house. We're so excited. Uh, I just love my pastor and just have learned so much and just continue to learn so much from him. So I'd love to hear, hear him preach the word. Uh, they just, just doesn't get much better than him. Amen. Um, also, uh, we're just say this. We are uh, in this series, as you know, it's called Better. And uh, the, the, the focus of it is uh, making sure that we're getting better at what matters the most and, and talking a lot about prayer and fasting because we want to get better. We want to get better at prayer. We want to get better at fasting. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. As a matter of fact, I've, I've already heard. I got a text this morning about uh, just something that God has done because of prayer. Someone was believing God for just the right job. And guess what happened? They went to work today, this morning, was their first day on the job. Praise God because of prayer. Amen. It's just been hearing around the church people talking about what they're believing God for in this season of prayer and fasting, that for clarity concerning some steps that they need to take, some doors to open or maybe close. And so it's exciting. Uh, and listen, when we talk about getting better at prayer, we're not talking about um, getting better in the sense of uh, praying more eloquently. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I mean, have you been around some people, you're like, man, I wish I could pray like they pray. I mean, it's just like so beautiful and so fluid and so it's just awesome. And, and, then, and then you're like, okay, God, I'm going to try. You know, I hope this works kind of a thing. And, but but here's, here's the deal. It's not about eloquence. It's not what we're shooting for. It's about effectiveness. It's not about eloquence. It's about effectiveness. That, that, that's what it's about. When we're talking about getting better at prayer, and fasting, that's what we're talking about. It's not being more eloquent. It's not like that God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, the Trinity's in heaven, and they grade our prayers like, that was a three. Could you try it again? Yeah. 
and we're trying to work up to that 10, you know, and that, that, that's not it. But, but, but we want to get better at being effective because um, when we pray, when we pray, what happens is this, uh, when it gives God access and whenever God gets access, he's going to influence. And whenever his influence hits a moment or hits a situation or hits a circumstance, his influence or his power causes things to shift or things to change. So prayer, prayer, the reason we want to get better and, and causing our prayers to be effective is because, because um, uh, go with God, with God, if he can just get a shot, if he can just have access, his influence is going to bring some big differences in and through us. Amen. Tell you a quick story. Uh, a few months ago, uh, my, my, my wife and I, Sandy and I, uh, took my parents down to, uh, to, to New Orleans. As a matter of fact, we were uh, at, at, on a holiday with them just a few weeks before, maybe a few months before. My dad just mentioned something. He said, well, you know, I just really like to go to the World War II Museum in New Orleans. He said, I just don't like the traffic and all that. So because I'm the most favored son among the Welch brothers, <laughs> just a joke <laughs> Really not, but anyway, it's it's. I I just called him a little bit, uh, you know, later, a few weeks later. I said, "Hey, Dad, you know, it's when we're still living in Lake Charles." I said, "Won't you, Mom and Dad, just come down? Won't you come down and, and we'll take you to uh, we'll take you. I'll just drive you to New Orleans. We we'll go to the World War II Museum. He's a history buff. Plus, plus his father and my mom's dad both were in World War II. He's a veteran. Uh, I'm a veteran. My brother's a, uh, a veteran. We're all combat veterans, and so it just runs in our family. So it was a great, great experience going to the war, going to the World War II Museum. If you like things like that, I would highly encourage you. If you're ever in the area of New Orleans, make sure you go by that museum. It's 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 incredible. It's incredible. World War II Museum. So we're walking through the museum, and um, I was reminded. I was reminded of this special weapon that uh, America had in World War II, and it was deployed. It was deployed in the, in, the, uh, in the Pacific region, in the Pacific theater, where we were, where we were fighting the Japanese. You probably know the history. Uh, in World War II, we and, and our allies were fighting on two different fronts in the European theater and also in the Pacific theater. But America deployed a very, very special um, tool, a very special weapon, and it had great uh, power. It was very, very effective. And, and as, I, as I looked at it, you know, I, had, I remembered it, and I, I, I thought, you know what? That, that weapon that was deployed, it wasn't bombs, and it, and, it, and it wasn't any type of a chemical. It had nothing to do with bullets, but, but actually it was, it was a language. It was a language that was deployed, that was used in the Pacific theater, and, and, and it won, and because of this, because of this weapon, this language, from a certain group of soldiers in the United States uh, Marines. It turned the tide in the Pacific theater and it gave us great victory over our enemies. <laughs> and you're like, what was it? What kind of language was it? I'm gonna leave you hanging for a minute. <laughs> I wanna talk to you tonight about prayer. Give you a few scriptures about prayer. Here's one of my favorites, James 5, 17 and 18. James 5, 17 and 18. We're going to talk about prayer tonight. Talk about prayer, hooking up uh, and continuing on with the thought about getting better, 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 better at what matters the most in regards to prayer and fasting. James 5, 17 and 18 says, Elijah was a human being even as we are. Think about that. Elijah was a human being. When you think about Elijah, you think about all, he's a, he was a prophet, great man of God, did tremendous things, amazing things. One of the things that he did, he was really, really effective in prayer. But, but look, look what, what James included, Pastor James included. He says, Elijah was a human being. In other words, he was a human being just like us, even as we are. But he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crop. Here's the point that I want to make about this scripture. We have the same opportunities as the heroes of the faith do. We have the same opportunities. Elijah prayed and things happened. And we look at that and we go, but that was Elijah. That was a spiritual giant. That was a, that was a hero of the faith. But here, James said, Elijah was a man just like we are. He was a human just like we are. So if, it, if prayer worked for Jane, excuse me, if prayer worked for Elijah, I believe prayer could also work for what? For, for us. How many could use some changes? How many could use some shifts in your life? Here's another, here's another great scripture concerning prayer. 1 John 5, 14 and 15, it says, This is the confidence that we have approaching God. 
This is the confidence that we have approaching God. One of the things that we want to walk away from with this series is this, is that we want to have a confidence. Getting better at what matters the most in prayer, prayer and praying. We want to be confident in our prayer life. Can somebody say amen to that? Let me say it even better than that. We want to be confident in that when we begin to pray that something is going to happen. When we begin to pray, we want to have the confidence that when we begin to pray, that gives access to God. And when God has access, he influences. And when he influences, something is going to change. Can somebody say amen to that in regards to just being confident in that? That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Isn't that awesome? To have that kind of confidence. So prayer shouldn't be, here's the point that I want to make. Prayer shouldn't be our, uh, excuse me, prayer shouldn't be our last resort, but it should be our first response. Why? Because we're so confident. When something's up or we just need something to move in our life, it, it, it shouldn't be our last resort, but it should be our first response to that thing or that moment or whatever's going on. We just need to go, you know what? Here's, what we're, here's how we're going to start this thing. We're going to pray. And we're confident that God is going to move and God is going to do something amazing. This past Sunday, we looked at, a, at, a, at an, an incredible event that took place in Jesus' ministry. It's the, it's the, the moment that, that, that um, a gentleman by the name of, um, what was his name? Bartimaeus just left me. Don't be offended, Bart. Uh, the moment that, that, that Bartimaeus received his sight, and we looked at that, and we, we, we said, uh, looked at that moment. We, we, we used our imaginations. We stepped back in time, and we used our imaginations, and we, we said, well, what, what, did we, what would we have seen in that moment when Bartimaeus, when he is calling out to Jesus? What, what would that have been? And, and, and we, we, re- we recognized, we realized that we would have seen passion. We would have seen persistence. And, and we would have seen the fact that Bartimaeus was precise. And we said, well, what if we took that same attitude and translated that over into our prayer life? And then we determined in our mind that we were going to be passionate about prayer. And what does that mean? What does that mean? Again, that means we're going to be passionate about prayer. That means it's not going to be the last resort is going to be the first thing that we do because we believe in prayer. Amen. But we also saw this. We saw the attitude that he had that he, he, that Bartimaeus was just persistent. And then how that we too can be persistent in prayer. And I'm going to, we're going to unpack this one in just a moment because I really felt like for tonight, we needed to unpack that, that one word persistent. And we're going to dig into that one. But we also saw the word precise. We saw that attitude in Bartimaeus that that he was precise when Jesus called him and Bartimaeus came to uh, came to Jesus. Jesus said, Bartimaeus, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? And he was very precise. We said this. We need to be precise in regards to what we ask God for. We, We just can't go to God and say, God, thy will be done. No, no. He wants to know what do you want? What do you want me to do in your life? You're giving me access to influence, but what do you want me to influence in your life? So we talked also about a couple of roadblocks, going back to persistent, because I want to unpack that. I feel like God wants us to unpack this one tonight. The Holy Spirit wants us to unpack this one. Couple roadblocks to pers- being persistent. Once we talked about this one on Sunday, and that is prediction, Pre- uh, persistence. The greatest en- one of the greatest enemies of persistence is prediction. Simply, what that means is, is that when we begin to pray, we can get in trouble if we try to predict as to how God is going to answer the prayer. We, in other words, we frame it in our mind, and we believe God is going to work this way because we're praying. But I can tell you, uh, so many times in my life that 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 that, that I, I would put I would put God in this box, saying, "God, I believe you're going to move this way when I pray," only to realize <laughs> He's not going to get in John's box. And John's mind can't even comprehend the ways that God can answer my prayers. And how that it's important that we need to determine in our heart and our minds that something that we need to add to our prayer life is God, help me recognize the answers when you roll them into my life. Because what can happen is is, is that if God doesn't move within our framework, we just stop and we give up. 
and we give in and we say, God, you're not working in my life. What is it? Well, you're working other people's life. Well, well, maybe if you just would have hung in there a little bit longer, or maybe, maybe, maybe if you just wouldn't have determined how he was going to work and begin to say, God, just help me see the answer. I know that it's coming. I know that it's coming. I know that it's coming and I'm not going to quit till I see it. What would happen? So prediction can be a, a, a roadblock, but, but here, here's, another, uh, here's another one that can be a roadblock to persistence. You got, your, you got your ears to hear? Are they on this evening? All right, here's another roadblock. It's understanding or the lack of understanding. So, so, so what happens when we come to a place where we don't know how to pray? In other words, we wanna be persistent we, we want to grab a hold of something and not turn loose and we're going to hang in there and we're going to hold on. We're going to pray and we're going to contend for God with God, not with God. We're going to contend for God's answer. We're going to hang in there to, uh, to, 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 to do that through prayer. And we're in there, we're in there, we're with it, we're with it, we're being persistent. But what happens when we come to a point where we're like, I'm just out. I, I don't even know, I don't even know how to pray anymore. But yet, but yet, I know God hasn't answered, but I, 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 what, what, what do I do? Because I haven't seen God. I haven't seen the answer yet. What, what, what do I do? Well, so the answer is this. The answer is this. You have to shift your method. You have to shift your method. 1 Corinthians 14, 14 and 15, Paul talks about two methods of prayer. He says, for I pray in a tongue my spirit prays and my mind is unfruitful. Watch this, verse 15. So what shall I do? I'll pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my what? My two methods of prayer. He said this, again, he said, so what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but also pray with my what? My, one translation says, I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my, what? my mind, my understanding. Here's the point. There are times when we're praying that we can pray with our understanding. We're praying with our understanding. We're praying with our understanding, but, and it's working. We know that and we can be confident in that, but there can be times that the enemy, the enemy can come in there and he can throw seeds of doubt to, to make you, uh, to lure you in to thinking your prayer's not working. How many believe that the enemy hates it when we pray? <laughs> he hates it. In other words, that's the reason he hates his 21 days of prayer and fasting, right? That's because he knows something is up. Amen. Watch this. So what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit. I will pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I also sing with my understanding. These two methods. Number one is to pray with your understanding. How do you do that? How do you pray with your understanding? How, how do I do that? How do I pray? Method number one, how do I pray with my understanding? It's very, very easy. You pray the word of God. Can I have a better amen than that? Amen. So whatever you're dealing with, whatever you need, what you need to do is you need to go and find out what God's word says about it. For example, people before have asked me over the years, they said, well, pastor, how can we pray for you? One of my answers that I always give is that uh, pray for me in regards to wisdom. That's what I want. I want wisdom. You know why? Because that's something that I pray for all the time. God, give me wisdom. Because the Bible says in James chapter 1, James chapter 1, the Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom, ask of God who gives it generously without finding fault, and it'll be given to you. So th this, this, is what, this is what I do. So when I'm, I, I hit a moment or hit a situation and I, I, I see it and I know I need to pray about it, I don't know what to do. One of the first things I do is I quote James chapter one. Father, your word says, Father, this is what your word says. Now listen, it's not that I'm reminding God. It's like God would go, I didn't know my word said that. No, 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 that's not, that's not what it is. What, what I'm doing is, or what a believer is doing at that moment is that they are aligning themselves with the will of God. It's alignment. 
I'm aligning myself. We're aligning. We're bringing our soul. We're bringing our soul into alignment, our thinking, our believing into alignment. Father, your word says, if any man like wisdom, let him ask that you give it, let him ask in faith, and you give it in a way that doesn't embarrass and humiliate it, and you give it generously. Father, I just love you, and I thank you for giving me wisdom. Just love it, Father. I thank you that you're giving me wisdom, and, and, and just keep standing, keep praying, keep thanking him for it. Amen. You want healing? You want healing? You believe in God for healing? You know what you need to do? Go get you some scriptures on healing. Align your prayers. Will you under, Align your prayer. Are you with me? Align it. For your finances... What do you do? Number one, you start tithing. <laughs> start there, right? And then, and then you, you, begin to, you begin to align. You take other scriptures. Philippians 4.19, I believe that my God meets and supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, I just thank you. All my needs are met in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's, that's, that's method number one. And you know what? Anybody can do that. Everybody can do that, can't you? You can go find you a promise, and you can stand on that promise, and you can align your will with that promise, and you can begin to pray that promise. Everybody can do that. Isn't that right? It's just not that hard. Amen? So what I do is that I use the language. I use my language to release my faith, my learned language. I, I use that. I use my learned language. But there are times, there are times, you're like, man, I just... I've, I've prayed every scripture, Father. <laughs> I've prayed every one of them. But you know that I, you just still need to be persistent. You just don't need to stop. You just don't need to back up. You ever been there? Just like, oh, I just want to keep praying. What do you do? Well, you shift over to method number two. Aren't you thankful for method number two? You say, well, some of you already know what it is. It's praying in the spirit. It's praying in in tongues. How many are thankful in this house? I said, how many are thankful in this house that we can pray in the spirit? <laughs> Aren't you thankful that God did not take away what he gave the early church? You, you do realize we're part of the same church. We're, we're part of the same church. It's not a different church. It may be a different generation, but it's the same, under the same dispensation. Can I have a better amen than that? Amen. We're part of the same church. And so method number two, Paul, Paul talked about it. He said, I pray with my mind. I pray with my what? My what? My understanding. And we'll release that with my language. But the, the method number two, he said, I pray with my spirit. I pray with my spirit. You see, when you were created, when you, when you were created, God created you this way, that you were created with a soul. It's your mind, will, and emotions. It's what your understanding is. It's what Paul was referring to a moment ago in method number one. But the, the Bible also says that you are created in the image of God. Therefore, you are a what? You are a spirit. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people get freaked out. They're like, Ooh. Ooh, what are you talking about? Well, if God is a spirit, we're creating his image, then we are what? A and we also just live in a what? We live in a body. That, that, that's, the reason, that's the reason that folks that folks that are saved and a family member passes away, they handle that passing better than those who are not saved. Because they know that tavern, that, that, that body that's there, their family member is not there. You got it? So man is a spirit. He has a soul and he lives in a body. And the moment you get born again, there is a connection made in your spirit. Your spirit comes alive with the life of God. And there is a supernatural connection there with the Holy Spirit. Aren't you thankful for the new birth? Aren't you thankful for that connection on the inside of you? The Holy Spirit is hooked up with you. Hallelujah. So Paul said that I pray with my understanding, but I also pray with my, my spirit, which means that there is another language that is available to Christians 
to believers who will embrace the, the gift and the preciousness, the precious gift of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. There's another language. Come, everybody say that with me. Say there's another language. All right, hold that thought real quick. So what happens when a Christian begins to pray in tongues? What happens when a Christian begins to pray in the Spirit? If you take a note, write this down. What happens when a Christian uh, prays in the Spirit? Number one, the Holy Spirit comes to help. That's what happens. Now listen, we're talking about getting better at prayer, getting more confident in prayer. So what happens to a, when a Christian begins to pray is that the Holy Spirit, he steps in and he helps. Romans chapter 8, verse 26, very familiar scripture to a lot of folks in the room, but you need to hear it again. Amen. Romans 8, 26 says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. What is that weakness? We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless what? groans. In the same way, the Spirit comes and does what? He helps us. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is, is not just a doer for us. The Holy Spirit is a helper. Matter of fact, you study it in the Greek, the, oh, the overall meaning of the word, it means one who comes along beside to do what? To help. That is the reason in John chapter 14, Jesus is talking to the disciples and, and, and the disciples were freaking out. Because Jesus is telling them, he's saying to them, look, I'm leaving this earth. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm not going to be with you long. And they are just flipping out. They are freaking out because Jesus is leaving them. Why, is G why are they so distraught? Why are they so upset? They are upset because Jesus helped them. So that's the reason Jesus in John 14, 16, 17 says, he says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another who? What? Another what? And that he may abide in you forever, the spirit of truth, whom, you, uh, whom, whom the world cannot receive, uh, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, watch this, for he dwells with you and be, will be what? But what did Jesus say? He what? He dwells what? And he will be what? <laughs> One of the best ways to understand what the Holy Spirit is like is to go and, and read and see how Jesus interacted with his disciples. Because Jesus was anointed of the Holy Spirit and Jesus was a helper to the disciples. Are you following me? Let me give you an example. He wasn't necessarily a doer, but he's also a helper. I'll give you an example. Remember when Jesus fed the 5,000? Or it says Jesus fed the 5,000. Remember that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to rock your world a little bit when I say this. Jesus didn't feed the 5,000. The disciples fed the 5,000. You, you, remember, you remember Jesus looked at the crowds. The disciples are looking at the crowds. And the disciples come over to Jesus and Jesus, these folks are hungry. <laughs> we need to send them away so they can go get them something to eat. Go send them to, you know, go, let them go get a Happy Meal, God. Some Wendy's. I should stop talking about food since we're fasting. <laughs> But, but you know how Jesus responded to them? No, 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 no. They don't have to go anywhere. You're going to feed them. <laughs> Us? Do you not see how many people are out there, Jesus? And Jesus said, no, no, no. You're going to feed them. And they said, but Jesus, we don't have enough money to do that. And Jesus said, no, no. You, you're still going to help them. You're still going to feed them. So, so Jesus said, what do you got? Got some bread, got a few fish. Jesus said, give it to me. Jesus blessed it, broke it. And did what? He handed it to the disciples, and the disciples did what? They fed the 5,000. What did Jesus do? Jesus, in that moment, took a hold with them. Are you following this? And he helped them. He did something for them that they couldn't do on their own. Let me say it this way. He did something with them that they couldn't do on their own. That's the reason the disciples would just freak out. Because they're going to like, who's going to help us feed the 5,000 if we have to do that again? Who's going to help, to, who's going to help us do this stuff? And Jesus said, look, don't, 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 get, don't sweat it. I'm going to send you another helper. And he's going to not just be with you. He's going to be what? In you. Everybody say, thank God for the Holy Spirit that lives in me.
So when a Christian prays, there's also alignment that takes place. When a Christian prays in the spirit, when a Christian prays in tongue, there's alignment. Alignment. And it's the it's alignment. What we mean by that, it's the perfect will of God is being voiced. Everybody listen to me. And Satan hates this. Romans 8, 27, it says, And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance to what? The will of what? God. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, if we ask anything according to his will, he what? He, if he asks anything according to his will, he what? He hears us. Now back to the, the store of the World War II Museum. So we're walking through there and I remembered, um, when I saw this, I remembered this, this display of these soldiers, this special weapon, I should say which were, were a group of soldiers. And what, what had happened was in the, in the Pacific Theater, there were the, the Japanese were breaking our codes. So, so when we were trying to communicate, the Marines were trying to communicate between the two, the, the, the Japanese were, were listening in on the codes and they were breaking our codes. So we were in trouble. So what happened was the Marines called on a special group of soldiers. They were the Navajo Indians. They were the Navajo Indians. And so they gathered the soldiers together and they, they said, look, we want you to use your language because nobody else in the world knows your language and you come up with a code for communication. And these group of soldiers came up with a code and they began, they were a special unit that the Marines used and it was a, it was a turn, it was a, there was a shift in the Pacific theater when these soldiers began to communicate using a language that the Japanese, the enemies, could not break, there was a shift that took place. Most historians agree that because of this language, this special weapon that was deployed, it wasn't bullets, it wasn't bombs, it was a language. And because of that language, there was a major shift and it caused America to overcome in the Pacific theater. Here's the point that I'm, I'm making here. When a Christian begins to pray in the spirit, what happens is there's a language that, he, that that person begins to speak. It's not English. It's not Italian. It's not a known language. It is a prayer language from heaven. And it may sound just like a bunch of fumbled up words and strange words as someone standing nearby. But what happens is when a person, when a Christian begins to pray and they begin to pray in the spirit, what happens is, is that, that, that there is a language language that's being released and in that language God's perfect will is being voiced God doesn't hear any jumbled up words what God hears is his perfect will being voiced it's a language that he understands and it's a language that he responds to <laughs> and Satan hates it You know why? Because he can't break the code. He can't break the code. He cannot break the code. You see, when we pray in our understanding, he, hears, he can hear what's being said. That's the reason the thoughts of, of unbelief can come. And I'm telling you, when you shift over to the other method and you begin to pray in the spirit and you begin to pray in tongues, what happens is he has no idea. He has no idea what's being spoken. But, all, but, the, what, what, but that doesn't matter. What matters is God knows what's being said. And it's alignment. There's an alignment to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows the exact and the perfect will of God. That's the reason, that's the reason Satan has worked overtime in the church He's worked overtime in the church convincing folks that tongues aren't for today. Let me ask you a question. Why would God the Father give the early church, the church that we are a part of today, that privilege 
and that weapon and that gift, but not give it to us. Why? Because you remember Paul said in Romans chapter 8, he said, when we don't know how to pray as far as we should, we're at a place of weakness. Right? So the early church could shift. The early church could shift over to the other, me- uh, the other method and pray in the spirit. Well, I just believe we can too. I said, I believe we can too. Amen. Amen. So there's alignment that takes place. When we begin to pray in tongues, we begin to pray in the spirit. To wrap up this evening, when a Christian prays in the spirit, when a Christian prays in tongues, God responds. He responds. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 starts out like this. It starts out with the word and. We know that all things work for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. I hear that scripture quoted a lot. Just saying, well, in general, God works, works everything out for the, will of, I mean, for the good of those who love him or called according to his purpose. But they're living off, often they leave off their first word. It's and. So that because of that word and, it's a conjunction, that means it's connected with the previous thoughts. Are you following me? Where Paul said, when a person, when a person doesn't know how to pray for it, pray as they should. It's called a weakness. If the Holy Spirit comes and what? He takes hold with them. Are you following me? Grabs a hold with them. He doesn't do it for them, but he gets a hold with them. And all things work out for the good of those who love him and called according to his purpose. God begins to work. God begins to move. As, we, as he's responding, as he's responding to the Holy Spirit helping us pray. He just begins to respond. He begins to move and things begin to shift. Things begin to work. Things begin to happen. You see, when you pray in the Spirit, when you pray in tongues, you may not know exactly what you're praying, but you will know why you're praying. You can know why. I'll give you this example. Um, several years ago, when we were pastoring out west, we um, built a facility. And um, so I felt like the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, go ahead and buy the, long story, I'm not going to go into it all, but buy the materials first. It was a steel frame building. So we, 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 bought, all, we bought the materials first. <laughs> the problem was we didn't have any land. <laughs> I know that's backwards, right? You're supposed to buy land and then buy the stuff. But I just felt like, and long story, I'll tell it one day and how God, why God showed us to do that. But we need to find land. I felt like, I felt like there was some property out in a certain area of town and um, I, we would just pray. I would pray with my understanding. And there were times that I would just shift and I just pray in the spirit. Now, I knew why I was praying in the spirit. I was praying about that land. I knew what I, knew what I was praying for, I knew what I was praying about. So just kept praying, stayed persistent, drove around different parts of the city. One day I'm driving uh, in the the area where I felt like we were supposed to build at. Driving in the area, I'm driving over an overpass, and there was a 26-acre lot. There had been a for sale sign out there, but it had gotten blown down. And I hadn't seen it because it had gotten blown down. Matter of fact, I wouldn't have seen it if I wouldn't have been looking in the right place at the right time. So I saw it and I pulled over and I thought, somebody's probably already bought it. Somebody's probably already bought it. But I'll call anyway. I crawled over the fence, went out there, got the dirt off of it, standing there, called them on my cell phone and said, hey, I'm standing in this property, on your property right now, is it still for sale? They said, yeah. How much do you want for it? They told me. I said, well, it's going to negotiate, but that's a pretty good deal. And then, then I said, um, I said, uh, look, would you sell it to a church? They said, yeah. Long story short, we got the property. As a matter of fact, today, I was there not long ago. Today, uh, there, it was kind of out of the edge of town, and people were like, why are we building out here? I said, the day's going to come when there's going to be a lot more stuff around here. I was back there uh, not long ago, and there's a brand-new high school right by the property. 
There are new subdivisions right by the property. There are new hotels right by the property. You know how you know how we found that? You know how we found that? Just staying persistent. And even when we didn't know how to pray with an understanding, we just shifted over to the other method and said, we're just going to pray in the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray in the Spirit. We're going to pray in tongues. And you know what? God moved. I could stand here all night long, hour after hour after hour, and tell you story after story after story. Now, one of the things that the enemy has, has, one of the lies that the enemy has sown is this, that it's not for everybody. That being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking tongues is not for everybody. That's not true. Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that the, 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 the disciples were in the upper room. When the Holy Spirit came into the upper room, it says he filled all of them. Every single one of them. But even after that, we see that the Holy Spirit was still available. It just wasn't for that group. Because in Acts chapter 19, Paul was walking along one day and he sees a group of disciples and he asked them, have you ever heard of the Holy Spirit? He said, no, I've never heard of them. He said, let me pray for you. He prayed for them, laid hands on them. Guess what happened? They prayed in tongues. They prayed in the Spirit. So there might be some people here tonight that you're like, man, I'd like to have that. I'd like to be able to do that. I've never prayed in the Spirit, never prayed in tongues. I'd like to have that language. Well, the good news is this. It's available for you today, and you can have it before you leave this place. You can have it before you leave this place. And so I'm not going to make a big to-do out of it, but I'm going to say this. If you have been thinking about this, maybe you heard about it, but you're like, you know what? I've never had anybody pray for me so that I could get my prayer language so that I can get my prayer language. We want to give you that chance tonight. So why don't you, everybody, stand to their feet. I want everybody to stand to their feet. Stand to their feet. And if you're here tonight and you're, 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 you're here and you're saying, no, Pastor John, I've heard about this and I'd love for somebody to pray for me. We've got some folks that are available for you tonight and they want to pray with you so that you can have this language that's available today and it's for you. It's not spooky. It's not weird. I am I'm telling you today, I'm completely confident that you can be filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues tonight, if you want it. I'll even talk you through it. We're going to have some people that are going to pray with you, and, 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 and it can happen here in this place tonight. So if you're here tonight, you say, yeah, I want, to be, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to pray in another language. I want you to just to step out of your seat. Your first step of faith is to get out of your seat and come down here. Your first step of faith, that's step number one. It takes faith. It takes faith. So step number one, take the step and get out here. Step number one, take a step of faith. Just line up here. The ushers are going to line you up. Come on now. Take that step of faith. Take that step of faith. There you go. There you go. Take that step of faith. You say, I'm born again. I'm saved. Praise God. That's awesome. That's awesome. You may say, well, does the Holy Spirit live in me? Oh, yeah, He lives in you. That's how, that's how you're born again. But see, when the Holy Spirit moved inside of you, when He took up, when you confessed Jesus as your Savior, remember that connection that I talked about? The Holy Spirit came and He connected. He brought all these wonderful gifts. One of them is a prayer language. One of them is a prayer language, right? Anybody else before, before, before we pray? Can I, can I have our altar workers go ahead and come on up and just, just stand behind these, these guys? Just one, one per person, please. Just one. All right, one per person. All right, everybody, aren't you thankful for these folks? Aren't you? Isn't it awesome? Man, it takes, it takes some guts. It takes some courage to come up. This is awesome. It's just a step of faith. Is what it is. And God's going to meet them. Can, can we just join our faith together and believe that man, these people are taking steps of faith? So I'm going to talk to you right now. Everybody, look at me if you're here. All right. In a moment, the individuals behind you are going to pray for you. Okay, and, and, and so what, what's going to happen is, is that when they pray for you, uh, you're going to have to use your faith. Okay, You're going to have to use your faith. When, you, when we speak in tongues, it's a spiritual language. Right? So the Holy Spirit's not going to come on you and it's going to make you just start moving your mouth. It's not going to happen. You have to move your mouth. You have to move your mouth. And this is all faith, right? You've got to move your mouth. And when you, the moment that you start moving your mouth... What's going to happen, what's going to happen is, is the Holy Spirit. He's your helper, right? That's what we said. He's your helper. 
He's your helper. So what's going to happen is that he's going to come up and he's going to hook up with those words. Are you following me? He's just going to hook up with those words that you begin to speak. And when he hooks up with those words, you're going to sense something on the inside of you. You're going to sense something on the inside of you. And it's going to be like a river that begins to flow. You're going to sense it. I'm telling you. It's going to happen. You're going to sense that. It's going to happen. And so, so when they pray with you and they say, you just begin to speak that language right now. Just begin to speak in tongues. Pray in tongues. Just by faith. You begin to speak those words, and when you begin to speak those words, the Holy Spirit's going to connect with you, and there's something that's going to come from the inside of you. And you know what it is? It's that beautiful language of the Holy Spirit. And, and so when it's going to, re- listen to me, it will revolutionize your prayer life. It's going to revolutionize your prayer life. It's going to revolutionize your prayer life. It's going to take your confidence to a whole other level. Because there are many times you're like, I don't know how to pray. With my understanding, well, just shift over to that other, that, other, that other language. Amen? And the Holy Spirit, He shifts over there with you. And I'm telling you, you can be confident. Something good's going to happen. Amen? Because your alignment, you've got perfect alignment with God. And, 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 that's, and he hear, that's what He hears. Amen? So let's pray right now. Everybody in the room, let's pray right now. You can turn around. These folks are going to minister to you. Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, when these, as these are being ministered to, we just believe right now in Jesus' name. We thank you. We thank you that it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, that you're meeting them where they are. As they begin to speak that language, as they begin to speak that language, as they begin to move their mouth, as they begin to form these words, God, we believe right now that the Holy Spirit's hooking up with them. In the name of Jesus, there we go. There we go. Hallelujah. There we go. Praise God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) That's it. Hallelujah. That's it. Praise God. That's it. We believe that they receive right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Just with ease. Just with ease. With ease right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you. We thank you, Father. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just also thank you. that We can have the confidence that when we pray, God, when we pray as we stand and pray, God, with our understandingers, when we begin to pray in the Spirit, God. We believe, Father, that, that, that we are confident, Father, that, that things are going to happen. That over the next 21 days, over the next several, several days, God, as we pray with our understanding and we pray in the Spirit, Father, we are confident that things are going to happen, that things are moving, that doors are opening. We thank you and give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just pray just for another moment in this place this evening. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for doors opening. We thank you because of prayer, you're moving, that doors are opening. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you that marriages are being restored. Marriages are being healed. Relationships are being restored. Relationships and workplaces are being restored in the name of Jesus. Relationships and workplaces are being restored because... You're getting access, Father, and your influence is softening people's hearts, Father. We thank you. We believe, God, right now that that, uh, even financial breakthroughs, things are happening, God. Things are happening. Things are moving, Father, because as we stand and we believe and we agree, Father, that things are happening. Supernatural, abnormal things are happening, Father. Things outside of the norm are happening, Father, and we just give you the praise and the glory and the honor. That healing, Father, is happening in the name of Jesus. That healing is happening. That immune systems are being strengthened because we're praying and we're giving you access and you're influencing our bodies and the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is causing our bodies to be restored and be healed, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. New places in your favor, new places in your grace, God, are being found, God, in the name of Jesus things, Father, that people have been standing for and believing for are suddenly going to come, Father. Those that have been standing for months and some have even years, there's going to be suddenlies that are going to happen, Father. Things are shifting. Things are moving, God, because we're praying. Persistent. We're not giving up. We're taking hold and we're not stopping. 
praying with our understanding, praying with our understanding, praying with the Spirit, and in the Spirit, we thank you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 We pray confidently. We pray courageously. We pray confidently. We pray courageously in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things are happening. Things are happening. Hallelujah. We're confident. And the devil can do anything about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He can't do anything about it. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We bless you. Hallelujah. And we're thankful, God. So thankful, thankful, thankful. Thankful for the Holy Spirit, our precious friend that you've given us, our helper. God, when we, when we pray, when we pray, when we pray, when we pray in the Spirit that He comes, and whatever, he's, whatever we're praying about, that He takes hold with us. He takes hold with us and He helps us pray out your perfect will. Father, we bless you. We bless you. Thank you right now. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Listen, some of these are still being ministered to, so I'll just, if you've got uh, uh, your children, you need to go pick them up. Youth, what I'm saying is you're dismissed, but we just want to respect this ministry time that's still going on up here. If you're a guest, make sure that you go by the guest center, say hello. We've got that free gift for you. But you can just kind of ease on out of here. Uh, don't forget your uh, generosity cards out uh, in the foyer. Can't miss those. Uh, make sure that you come Sunday morning. Bring somebody. You can make a difference in somebody's life by having them here this Sunday morning. So let's just respect this ministry time as we ease out and have an awesome week in Jesus' name.